Hello. I'm certain many of you assume that these biological factors primarily determine our willpower. Indeed, this was the prevailing belief in the scientific community for an extended period. However, recent studies indicate that these biological factors might not be as crucial as initially thought. Instead of accounting for approximately 70% of our daily willpower, it seems they only contribute around 30%. It's likely that what happens in our minds plays a more substantial role in determining our willpower levels. Today, we'll discuss five psychological factors that can enhance motivation, increase willpower, and prevent ego depletion. The first factor is known as chunking, and a remarkable example of this concept comes from one of the world's greatest magicians. Chunking David Blaine is renowned for his endurance stunts, such as spending over 63 hours encased in a block of ice. The remarkable aspect of Blaine's feats lies in his adept use of chunking to maintain a constant supply of willpower. Chunking involves breaking down a sizable task into minuscule components. In the case of Blaine's icy challenge, instead of fixating on the daunting total duration of at least 60 hours, he focused on each hour individually. By repeatedly telling himself, I just need to make it through the next hour. Blaine harnessed the power of chunking. This strategy works because our brains are wired to conserve energy and be efficient with willpower. While we possess nearly unlimited willpower, there's a point where our brains signal, that's enough for today. Faced with an overwhelming task, the brain may initially reject it, deeming it too extensive for the available willpower. However, through chunking, the focus on small, manageable pieces convinces the brain that it can tackle the task, releasing additional willpower. In a previous lesson, we emphasized the importance of setting a low bar when establishing routines. This aligns with the concept of chunking, where the minimum amount of work becomes a manageable unit, providing a boost of willpower sufficient to adhere to habits. Applying chunking to daily life involves reframing tasks. Rather than setting the ambitious goal of completing a five-page paper in one go, one can generate more willpower, motivation, and productivity by committing to finishing a single paragraph at a time. Additionally, chunking contributes to increased confidence levels in tackling tasks. The second critical psychological factor influencing our willpower levels is confidence. The degree of confidence we possess in relation to a specific task directly influences the amount of willpower needed to accomplish it. Consider a scenario where the goal is to shed 20 pounds. If you were to survey random strangers on the street about their confidence in achieving this goal, a majority would likely express a significant lack of confidence. However, employing the concept of chunking by breaking down the weight loss into smaller, more manageable increments, such as just one pound, tends to boost people's confidence in their ability to succeed. Confidence in this context thrives on recognizing and celebrating small victories. By actively paying attention to and achieving minor milestones along the way, individuals gradually build confidence toward the ultimate goal. This process involves fostering a genuine belief in one's capability to accomplish the task. A practical strategy for building confidence through small wins involves tracking personal growth. For instance, Individuals aiming to lose weight can leverage apps like MyFitnessPal to meticulously monitor changes in weight. Observing the consistent drop in weight becomes a tangible representation of progress, significantly contributing to an enhanced sense of confidence. The third avenue through which we can influence our willpower levels revolves around changing our perception of willpower itself. In our previous lessons, I emphasized the significance of actions like avoiding ego depletion and provided insights into the ways our willpower levels can be drained. While these aspects are genuine and serve a purpose, a study conducted in 2010 by Professor Jobvis revealed that our perception of willpower can significantly impact its levels. For instance, individuals who believe that willpower is limited tend to deplete it faster than those who perceive it as unlimited. To address this issue, Let's establish the truth about willpower once and for all. The reality is that our capacity for willpower far exceeds the amount we actually use throughout the day. Our brains tend to impose limits on it, but in truth there's an abundance of untapped willpower. If you've been following this course, 
you've likely gained knowledge about how willpower functions, and, as the saying goes, knowledge is power. This means you have more control over your willpower. I firmly believe that through studying willpower, I have acquired the know-how to access my unlimited willpower more effectively than the average person. By adopting this belief, you'll discover an increased reserve of willpower in the long run. The fourth way we can influence our levels of willpower is by changing our changing our identity. The concept of identity is crucial in aligning with our goals and building habits, as it significantly reduces the amount of willpower needed to adhere to them. However, changing one's identity is a challenging task. How can we go about it? The most effective approach is to be mindful of our language and how we express ourselves. The way we phrase things has a profound impact on our self-perception. For instance, when faced with the urge to smoke, instead of thinking, I can't smoke, I told myself I was going to quit. We should shift our mindset to, I am not a smoker. The person in the first example still identifies as someone trying to quit smoking, while the person in the second example sees themselves as a non-smoker from the outset. Over time, adopting this new identity leads to a genuine belief in it, subsequently reducing the amount of willpower required to adhere to the habit. Another effective technique is to replace phrases like I can't, I have to, and I must with I want to. The first three phrases reflect a mindset associated with the old identity one is attempting to change. Using I want to emphasizes a personal choice and aligns with the new identity being cultivated. But if you use the phrase I want to, then you're agreeing with your new identity. And final way we can influence our willpower with our mind is by doing what's called high-level thinking, a study conducted in high-level thinking. Low-level thinking involves focusing on short-term and specific aspects. For example, contemplating how to get to the gym, planning weight loss strategies, or considering specific foods to eat falls under low-level thinking. Conversely, high-level thinking encompasses more general and long-term ideas. It involves understanding the reasons behind actions, such as why one is going to the gym, why weight loss is essential, or why dietary changes are being made. While low-level thoughts are necessary for planning and execution, it's beneficial to allocate more time to high-level thinking. High-level thoughts instill a sense of purpose and meaning. By consistently contemplating the reasons behind lifestyle changes, individuals begin to genuinely believe that these changes are in their best interest. A recommended exercise involves taking the habits you are trying to build in this course and filling out an entire page explaining why you want to stick to each habit. To summarize, there are five powerful ways to enhance willpower and motivation by altering thinking patterns. Chunking. Break down big goals into smaller tasks. Increase confidence. Develop the belief that goals can be achieved. Change willpower. Perception. View yourself as someone who can tap into unlimited willpower through study and practice. Change identity. Identify with the desired change rather than the old habits. Engage in high-level thinking. Spend more time contemplating broader, long-term ideas. The course is made possible with the support of patrons, and if you found value in it, becoming a patron is appreciated, offering perks and benefits. If you like this video, please subscribe and follow my YouTube channel. Thank you.